Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast, is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. What's up, kids? Welcome back to Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast. I know what you're thinking. Guys, season one's in the can. We've enjoyed it. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. We couldn't we couldn't wait till each episode dropped. We couldn't wait to hear what you guys had to say. Well, you're welcome. We gave it to you and then some. Some episodes were this long, some were this long. But it's okay because that's what we do. We analyze, then we analyze that and we analyze some more. Number one, because we're all three pretty intense like that. And number two, we just have so much fun at this. So what can you expect for season two? We're going to get into it here today. I'm Tom Clark, of course, joined as always by Joe Higgins and Jay Luft. Here with you for the Two Nations pod. Gentlemen, season one was a blast. It took us six months. I love making those length of time jokes. I don't know why. <laughs> they only pop me, I guess, but <laughs> because we dropped the trailer on June 22nd and the first episode of season one was August really? 12th. Yeah. Wow. So I know, right? Crazy. What do you guys think yeah, heading into season two, man? Overall, what do you think? It's weird, isn't it? Because season one ends on kind of like a bittersweet note. Mm. Like, they've just been relegated, but then Ted and Rebecca are finally on the same page. So it's where is that going to go from here? Mm. And I, th- I think there's like kind of that, as I say, that excitement of how they're going to like get themselves back into the Premier League and where everyone's going to get like stories going to go from there. That's fair. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, it's having that first season where it establishes, it gives you out everything that you need. It tells you who everyone is, what their role is, you know, what their their relationships are with everyone else. Mm-hmm. And then in season two, it can. This is when the main like story sort of kicks into gear, and like the arcs become a lot more apparent as to who's going where and what's going to happen and stuff. There is still a couple of, you know, curveballs and and red herrings and and stuff in there. There's a a lot of phone-based hijinks in the second series. Uh, But it's it's, it's what a a great series or anything will do. It's it's, it's the classic three-act structure. Mm. First one, you set them up. Second, act development. Third, act resolution. And so in... This now, season two, act two, this is where the story, for me, really is. And then three just ties everything up nicely. But two is, I think, my favourite season of all of all of them. Because we get some incredibly, like, weird episodes. Um, like the, the, the Coach Beard episode, which is like nothing else in the series. Mm. It's just like... They they got a random director in and we're like, you do it how you want to do it. It's it's that sort of thing. But then we also get a lot of the the main story happens in season two. You're right, and like as as we said all during the the recording sessions for season one, we were laying the groundwork, but you know pouring the foundation for this show, establishing characters, establishing motives, establishing you know, conflicts, understanding what the conflicts are, knowing that the resolutions could be in the distance or maybe just over the horizon because we didn't know yet, not understanding what Rebecca's long-term goals were other than burn it all down. Uh, And and, you know what I mean? And not really knowing where we were going to land with Jamie and Roy and Keely. And and I love that. But, like, I'm with you, man. Like, I I enjoy season two better because as much as, as... any good story has conflict. And look, kids, conflict doesn't need to be, you know, put up your dukes. Conflict is just a back and forth. You know, you have to, you're seeking a resolution, right? But yes. season one is so combative at times that I'm like, I love it. But like, I don't know, dude, the soft in me is like, I just want people to be happy. I want to get to the part where everyone's <laughs> smiling and season two, as we'll see, kicks off like that and everybody's happy and I love it. So. Season two kind of feels like the redemption arc, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of characters have to kind of like really find themselves to get to like where they are in season three. Mm. That's a good call. Yeah. And as I said, we were establishing characters 
all throughout season one, understanding who these people are and why we should or maybe shouldn't care about them overall. But we did have 10 episodes in season one. We reminded everybody of that in every episode, I believe. There are 12 episodes in season two. And just as a quick rundown, kids, in case in case some of you are watching and or listening that have never watched Ted Lasso before but are watching it and following with the show, which I know some of you are and we very much appreciate it, here's what you can expect if you're, if you're holding on and waiting for us, and thank you very much if you are. Here's what you can expect. Here's the episode titles. Goodbye, Earl. Lavender. Do the Rightest Thing, Carol the Bells, Rainbow, The Signal, Headspace, Man City, Beard After Hours, I'm here for that. <laughs> Saying, No Weddings in a Funeral, Midnight Train to Royston, and Inverting the Pyramid of Success. Twelve oh. episodes in season two. <laughs> oh, I, f- I forgot about the Pyramid of Success. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and... Joe, to your point about the three-act structure, I made this comparison, I think, in episode 10, where I said, you know, A New Hope is an amazing film, right? Empire Strikes Back ends on a down note. Return of the Jedi is salvation and brings it all home, which basically, yes. in my head, that's what the Ted Lasso three-season structure is. And So that means, kids, that you're in for some stuff over the course of these next 12 episodes because one of the main characters starts to do some things and you're like, Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. And then that person does it. So I don't want to give it away, but uh, Jay, we had moments in season one of that being teased, but man, getting into the first few episodes of season two, you really start to see it become a thing. Yeah. I think it's a lot more subtle, isn't it? In season one, it's only like sort of like the last, like two or three episodes, they start planting the seeds for what's coming. Mm. And then, by I'd say probably by episode five of season two is when like you can really start to see that shift and it's like okay here we go yeah and then like it comes completely off the tracks and it becomes unstoppable <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's also a very bold move to kind of without giving too much away to have like that kind of like shift in a character just in like all their kind of like who they are and how they how they've been portrayed up until this point. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, again, it's unexpected, Joe. You know what I mean? It is kind of like you said, though. Like it was always there. Mm. Really mm. watching it, you do spot it more. Like it's always been there, bubbling underneath, and it's only with the allowances that they're given in the second season that they become who they are. So I suppose thing. as well, like with. I'm kind of like discounting the fact there's a couple of like episodes which is like time jumps. Yeah. It literally goes from like from like the start of the new season. Well, it season season two starts at like about what like six or seven games into the first season. So like Yeah. That'll be around October time. So we don't know what's happened in between. And then from there it then jumps to like December very abruptly. So yeah, I suppose I suppose there's there's quite there's quite a lot of kind of like jumping in the timeline which would kind of allow uh yeah. how what feels like a stark shift towards being actually probably a lot more gradual yeah. so i've always been under the assumption with a show of this nature whether it's about football or baseball or basketball or whatever that you could just you know come up with the, the this notion or like a school that involves high school kids or something like there's the off season there's summer Hey, hey, kids, Tom Clark here, and did you know the very podcast you're listening to right now is available on boinkstudios.com. B-O-I-N-K, Boink Studios, is the home of Tom Clark's main event, Tom Clark's 6M podcast, and Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast. Visit the site today for links to every podcast platform, social media, special announcements, and a lot more. Check out the site and bookmark today, boinkstudios.com. But Jay, what about an off season for English football? Is that a thing or is it pretty much year round? So it's the football season is usually the last two weeks of August to the first two weeks of May. Mm-hmm. And then from May to like May, for basically the time in between, usually you tend to find the players have like a couple of weeks off. Sometimes there's international tournaments in the summer. Um, and then they'll start having like preseason friendlies where they'll go or they'll go on like 
a lot of clubs now go on like tours around like US or uh, Asia places that, places essentially where they want to try and like get a bit more of an identity with like the people in that area obviously mm-hmm. because the Premier League's like now a global thing not just an English thing um so it's it's one of those things where there was the potential that they could have done something cool with the story with like with that where like they go on like a summer holiday or something but at the mm. same time i i quite like the fact that it's don't it's treated like it's a football season yeah and then the off seasons like the gap between the between the two seasons because a lot a lot of it would have been like you'd have, you'd have to imagine for um for ted lasso like ted would have probably gone back to kansas to see uh the family and stuff like that and a lot yeah. of the players would have gone back to see their families for a couple of weeks and then come back to train them that's a great point while there would have been compelling stuff, I think it wouldn't have really done anything to move along the story. And, and you know, plus it's it's the it's the thing about do we need to see these characters in the off months? Do we is any of that compelling enough to make for an episode? You just assume that that you assume that you're seeing the best stories are being played in front of you versus you know they they went to the market or they drove a car or they caught a taxi and went somewhere and you know what I mean? It's it, it's like Jay said the time skips are there because nothing happens mm. in them and it's, it's rather than watching something play out week out week in week out where nothing really happens skip through the bits where things are happening relevant to the stories that you're trying to tell yeah i mean as as well with them being in the championship like it, the, the amount of games they play they literally play like three games a week so mm. if they were trying to cover it by game by game like they wouldn't be able to kind of like let the stories breathe because they'd be focusing on that as like so almost like a, a kind of like hurdle of part of like what's progressing the story. So the way they're kind of portraying it actually works out a lot better, I think. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. You talked about time jumps and it made me think one of the many reasons I stopped watching Walking Dead, to be <laughs> honest, there's a lot of them, but you know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like suddenly they would just pop up two years later or something. I'm like, whoa, hold on. What? Didn't they jump like five or 10 years at one point? Or am I crazy? Didn't they? It was a five year jump. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Okay. But like, you're not, what are, are you going to catch us up? What's going on? Like that kind of stuff is very jarring for me. I guess if, if you know it's coming, that's one thing. But like when you don't know it's coming, they just throw it up on the screen. Like soap operas do that too. I know this because when I was growing up, my mom was hooked on them. So, you know, we had the one TV. So, you know, uh, Tom, <laughs> Tom was stuck watching soap operas as a child. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's a device they use there as well. I think we both maybe agree, Joe, about season two being the best. Jay, do you agree that season two is the best of the three, in your opinion? I think as an all-round one, yeah. Um definitely think it's got it's got two of my favorite episodes in season two mm. um i don't know i think season three doesn't get a lot get enough love but i think I as a whole the whole thing like as a as a whole season two is definitely the best season not only does season two not yeah. get enough love it gets too much criticism in my opinion so because mm. you know people feel the need to crap on things i don't know why we do that but hey we do it so Kids, what you'll see in season two, as we said, 12 episodes, you'll see a lot of the same directors and writers. You'll see a few new names here of a few new people coming on board and working on the show. And yes, for me, as we've we've all three said here today, is another great season and all, honestly, probably the best of the three seasons. Of course, this is all subjective. It's whatever you guys think, you know, whatever you uh, whatever you believe to be good or bad or whatever. It's all subjective. But in, in the opinion of these three gentlemen, yes, season two is much better. So can't wait to do it. Uh, we, we are time traveling and time hopping a bit here ourselves in the two nations. It's just that sometimes we don't tell you about it. So as we record this, we may be in the midst of recording season two. I've just let the cat out of the bag. So I know, right? It's, it's almost like we forgot <laughs> to do this episode. <laughs> it's almost it's almost like, but that didn't happen, Jay. You don't mean sausage is made. Not, That's right. Not that it would. We didn't forget. We just intentionally planned for it to be awkward. I mean, <laughs> that's what I stick with. Well, kids, we're not going to talk it to death. We just want to sign off with this. Thank you so much for following uh, the show. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for checking out the episodes. 
Thanks for following us on the social media platforms. You can find us at Two Nations Pod wherever you are on social media. That's where we are at Two Nations Pod on every platform. And you can find the Two Nations under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast, wherever you find your podcasts. I've said for the longest time, it would be awesome to do podcasts and get rich and famous. Wouldn't that be great? I, I mean, I think we all agree that'd be that'd be awesome. However, I love recording with with smart, funny people and my friends and people who love talking about this stuff, whether it's geek culture, pop culture, all the above. It's just this is one of the passions I have in my life and I love doing it and I love doing it with friends. So you guys are the best. I appreciate everybody's work here. It's awesome, man. And I again, kids, we hope you that we hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for following us. And if you've got any comments, questions, thoughts, words of wisdom, please let us know. Our ears are open. We're always willing to say hey and talk. So we appreciate you very much following the show. Keep your eyes open. Season two's coming. And we're not going to tell you when. Today, what am I going to do? We're not going to tell you today. So just keep your eyes up. This is where, guys, if you don't follow us on socials, you're going to be left out in the cold. Stay tuned, kids. A lot more to come. And we'll see you then. For Jay and for Joe, I'm Tom. We'll see you next time, kids. 